Yep. All set for now. Five steps to a healthy breathing ritual. There you go. Whoop, whoop, you're in business. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Hello, Tessa. Oh, you're on mute, honey. Just connecting audio. All right, cool. You made it. Yay. All right, let me see. Try now. Say something. Can't hear you. <laughs> we'll do sign language. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Thank you both for jumping on. We have about six people registered and yeah, it's uh, we're a couple minutes in, I think, or one minute in, yeah. We'll wait for a couple more minutes to see if there's anyone else jumping on board. Yeah, cool beans. I'm excited. Before we start, I wanna check uh, quickly, you know, what made you jump on this call, Scott? Um, yeah, just really interested in, um, in the content. So, um, healthy breathing, a lot, a lot of courses we've been doing lately have been about breathing and that's been brought up and, um, yeah, so interested to learn some more. Beautiful. Are you conscious of your breathing? Do you find? Um, at times, yeah, at times I, I go down the river most mornings and when I sit down there, when I sit down there, I, I, I think I'm fairly conscious of yeah. it. Um, yeah, and, and probably, again, when I exercise, because with, with boxing, like in between rounds or, or something like that, I'm, I'm conscious of breathing, but probably the rest of the day, not really, yeah. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Any luck, Tessa? Not really, yeah. I can, I can lip read. <laughs> no, I can't lip read like that, no. <laughs> it's just one of those things, isn't it? You know, I, um, I used to work in a help desk environment, so sometimes, you know, we would tell the customer, just plug in and plug out, and yeah. miraculously stuff works, or knock it on its head or send it flying to the end of the room. <laughs> Back then, laptops and computers weren't, you know. They weren't so precious. <laughs> the last Zoom I was on, my my um, voice wasn't working, and then I, I I I logged off and logged back on, and it worked. But yeah, with an ah yeah, yeah. Out. Sometimes it's just one of those things we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? There you are! Hooray! Woo woo! I have to log on from my phone. So Excellent. annoying. Yes. But anyway, <laughs> it's all good. Better. It's all good. Beautiful. Thank you both, Tessa and Scott, for jumping on. This is great. I am not going to speak to myself today. That's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was asking uh, Scott earlier. You know, I'm going to ask the question to you now, Tessa. You know what's made you jump on this this webinar? Um. Well, you know, I've done breathing with you before. And so I just want to really get to understand it. And I guess learn how you do what you do. Because yeah. it worked for me the last time. And I think it's so important for us to breathe properly and, and learn how to breathe properly because it's such an unconscious thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Are you conscious of your breathing? When are you most conscious of your breathing? not conscious i guess no unless i'm exercising and then you can hear yeah, you're puffing or you're out of breath yeah um, but i think it's at the times when you're feeling or when i'm feeling like um a bit stressed that i that i don't even know that i'm not breathing mm. um, and i think that's when breathing is so important because it just calms you down yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's when we become a bit conscious, right? Like when yeah. our breathing is under attack, when we become yeah. conscious. Yeah, or when someone actually points it out to you that, hey, I can see this is really stressing you out. 
maybe you should just take a few breaths and calm down and you're like oh yeah actually that helps you know yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what was, you know, one of the reasons why I, I run this uh, as a program in, in, my, in my school and I teach this to all my clients because the fundamental belief that I have been given and I love this fundamental belief is that breathing above everything else is the one thing we can control. Mm. When it comes down to the smallest thing, breathing is the one thing we can control. And that in itself is the gift. Before yeah. we jump into the webinar itself, you know, what's coming up for you when you hear that? For, for me, I guess, um, it is something that we can control, but like, I, I, I guess I just don't think about it because it's so natural. It's mm. like a very unconscious thing. Mm. Although, um, I read somewhere about like we all, like, you know, we, we do things either consciously or, and then it becomes like unconscious. Like when you learn to drive, you really know that you're learning to drive and what you need to do. And then after, you know, a couple of months or years, it becomes very unconscious. Yeah. And I think breathing is probably a bit the same thing. Yeah. It's something that we do every day. But if you hold your breath, you will know, hey, I'm not breathing. So exactly. then it becomes conscious again. Exactly. What about you, Scott? When you hear the phrase, you know, breathing is the one thing you can control. Yeah, I actually wrote that down because that really resonated. Um, and and it, I've never thought of it like that. Um, yeah. It is. Um, yeah, I, I, I suppose I, I've never thought of it like that. So it really stands out to be true. It's, yeah, um, yeah just a, uh, yeah. Yeah. You thought, yeah. you thought that, yeah, well, you, you exactly, exactly right. You can, that is something you control. Yeah. And, you know, and, and especially in those and, moments when you feel like life is taking over, or something is happening. Mm. And if you go back to that belief that this is the new standard, the new consciousness, that breathing is the one thing you can control. Mm. And that sets you up like, oh, it, it, it changes this belief that could form in your mind. I don't have control, but actually, no. Breathing is the one thing you can control above yeah. everything else. And I feel like that's a really good place for us to start. When I first, one of the reasons I, I went on this quest to figure out breathing, to understand breathing, <laughs> is because I, in a, a story is that I've been an athlete for most of my life. Growing up in school, I was a runner, I picked up netball, and I loved long distance running. And as I grew older and I started working, it was a case of picking up sports at the gym or going for training PT sessions and understanding really the power of my breathing and how it facilitated my training, how I got better as I breathed through my sets. But I think the biggest shift for me happened was when I did yoga in India for two mm -hmm. months. Yep. And that completely changed my life. That was the transformation that I experienced with breathing and understanding the power of breathing. And I'm going to set us up at that level where breathing is the one thing you can control and how transformative it is. And that's why I believe we need to have a healthy breathing ritual in our lives. And having that, starting your day, right? imagine starting your day with a breathing ritual. How is that going to change your life and ending your day with a breathing ritual? Sounds good. Yeah. Yep. yep. Beautiful. So before we do that, I'm going to ask you to breathe. <laughs> I'm going to take you through a very gentle breathing exercise. It's called the four eight, which is you breathe in for four counts and you breathe out for eight. Hey, Wendy, how are you? Oh, you don't want to know. Talk about emotional fitness. I'm needing it right now. Oh, excellent. <laughs> You're in the right place. Welcome. <laughs> and you've come just at the right time. We were talking about how breathing is the one thing you can control. Yes. 
right? Above everything else, breathing is the one thing you can control. And what it would mean for us to have that healthy breathing ritual, to develop this emotional fitness, and it starts with breathing. And before we jump into anything, I really want to take this time to set us up to breathe consciously. So we're going to do this four, eight, which is breathe in for four and you breathe out for eight. We will do this three times. I will count you in. I want you to know that when you do this the first few times, it's going to feel a bit strenuous because you have not done something like this before. Totally wig out, feel how clunky it is and it will be totally okay. Is that cool? Cool. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Ready? Breathe. Then do a big breath of air out and breathe in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How does that feel? Calming. Calming. Yeah. So good. Very simple technique. You can start your ritual there. That's the easiest thing to do. The four, eight ritual. The... A bit of a story, you know, I started earlier with explaining where and how I chanced upon and understanding my breathing. One of the, one of the most important, um, the defining moments of my life was I was at work and it was a very high pressure situation. This is more than 10 years ago now and I still remember it as I think about it. I think about poor me who was experiencing that moment. It was a high pressure situation. There was a lot of anxiety and anger in the room we were about to lose a 10 million dollar contract mm. so stakes were high and i remember in that moment i was asked a critical question that would help us to determine whether we could save this deal or not in that moment i had an anxiety attack i was you know completely like never had such an anxiety attack like that before. In fact, that was my first. And in that moment, I can see my, my colleagues going, Jenny, are you okay? Jenny, hang on, calm down. It's going to be all right. Cause I'm like, <sighs> it, it was I, like, I had this big weight on my chest and automatically I remember my teacher telling me breathing is the one thing you can control. I don't know where or how, but his words came back to me. And that was when I just went <sighs> as much air as possible into my lungs. And then I remembered the technique that he taught us to breathe better. And the technique comes from the 4-8, but there's, a, there's a, one more step to it. And that was the beauty of that moment. And my colleagues were like, how did you do that? that they were more surprised by how I recovered than my anxiety attack. <laughs> <laughs> Like, how did you do that? Tell us. We want, no, teach us. How did you do that? That was just phenomenal. And that's when I knew I had to share this message. The benefits of doing this breathing technique, and especially if you set this up as a ritual, what I found was it helped me to start my day at a, such a powerful note. It leveled me up. The moment I wake up, I open my eyes, I take my three, three breaths, and that tells, gives me this feeling like what a blessing it is to be alive, to be able to breathe like this. The other benefit of breathing deeply is you don't know what position you slept in. <laughs> and sometimes you have like a little crook in the neck or, you know, a little tightness in the muscle. And I use the same breathing technique to channel my breath energy into that part of my body that needs that extra, that extra love. And whatever came up in the middle of the night, what were, you know, it could have been a dream or it could have been a feeling unconsciously or subconsciously. And my breath beautifully takes care of that tension. That's what I love about this breathing technique. It's so easy and there's numerous benefits. The third benefit being like I, you know, I explained earlier, in any moment in time, it's available to you. Any time in your life, you can use it easily. 
and confidently. The contrast of not having this technique, of not having this ritual, of not being conscious of your breath energy, this power, is that you don't understand what you're trying to do. When your body is deprived of oxygen, and especially in that moment of anxiety, of tremendous stress, you know, you can feel your body going, doing this, retracting. It's like a coil that's being wound and wound and wound. And in that moment, how do you, and you need, it's, it's doctors, it's medical bills, it's painkillers, it's addictions, reaching for more chocolate to relieve the stress or more wine, whichever is your, your fancy. <laughs> really. I mean, instead of resorting to that, you have this ability now to breathe. Breathe in a fully functional manner that truly just relaxes your body and you have total control of it. Total control of it and it's free. Totally free. That's what I love about this experience. Throughout the day, you're going to find uh, this, you know, we have this upheaval, right, of emotions up and down taking us, it's like a drama with our emotions. Oh my gosh, one moment I'm fine, the next moment something happens and completely taken for a spin. It's exhausting. It is emotion, emotionally draining and exhausting to have that. And breathing settles you back down. That's the beauty about breathing. It settles you back down. One of the amazing transformations that I saw with my clients when I started teaching them this, that not only do they do this every day, 75% of them said, my life has changed because of breathing. Because I take, started implementing this breathing technique. I have clients who use that a different, I have three different techniques for breathing that I teach in my class. And they say, I use one of the techniques in the gym, one of the techniques when I got to walk in nature, one when I think I need to scream at someone and I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm struggling with the words, but I feel like screaming and breathing allows me to take care of myself first. And that's what I love about this beautiful resource that we have, this breath of air. I don't know if you guys are aware of, you know, where does breath energy come from? Are you familiar with any of this? Not really. No, not really. All right, beautiful. When I was um, learning yoga and meditation in India for two months, it was the guru who taught us the origins of the word breath in Sanskrit. It comes from the word prana, which is spelled P-R-A-N-A. -A. Prana means life force. That's the origin of that feeling, of the word prana. And now think of your breath as a life force, a force that is abundant, it is easily available, and it's designed for you, that life force. You're from that life force, and you are connected to that life force. And now this is a higher level, dimensional understanding of breath energy far far more potent i'm going to check in with you right now like uh, what are the thoughts or questions that are coming across for you wendy do you have any questions or like ahas uh, no okay that's cool thank you does anyone have any questions <coughs> No, my, my no. mum, oh, yeah, can I? Can, yes, go for it. When, when you're breathing, is it, so we're breathing in and out, out our nose, like it's in, or is it in, in nose, out mouth, or? Great question. Great question. So you you have options. When you want to have more access, quicker access into your lungs, I would say use your mouth both ways. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? When you need to quickly calm down, use your mouth both ways. If you feel like you want to have the meditational, intentional, purposeful, gentle, breathe in and out through your nose. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And sometimes we, we just need to let, like, let out a big stressor. <laughs> right? Yeah. Good grief. That's what I do. 
<laughs> and you can have that little play with your lips as well. So there's a few different things that you can do. Great question. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Tessa, what's your question? Oh, no, I don't know. I'm good. Okay. The, I'm going to now take you into the steps. All right. So there are five steps. Now, the purpose of setting up this ritual is so that you incorporate this when you start your day and when you end your day. And as you start building this muscle for breath breathing ritual, you'll find that you can automatically access it without even thinking, Jenny said to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> it's you're training your body. When you have a ritual, you're training your body easily to access this ability. It's like a stored memory process when you have this ritual. It's automatic, it's ready to fire. The five steps I'm gonna take you through is, the first is understanding what a full breath of air is. And there's a medically scientific practice or reasoning that comes from the school of yoga. That's one, so I call that the 90% full breath. I know it sounds a bit like an oxymoron, but I tell you it's a 90% full breath. The second step is doing the four eight in a little extended manner. So we did four eight earlier, we're going to do four six eight this time. That's the ritual, four six eight. The third is we're gonna practice it breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the mouth for the ritual. The fifth is understanding deep breathing. So there's full capacity, ability to breathe deeply into our body. And I'm gonna show you how, I'm gonna demonstrate that a little later. And the fifth is doing it daily. Those are the five steps, doing it daily. You may start off with doing it once and then you incorporate that to doing it twice. For me, I definitely do it in the morning. All right, are there any questions about these top five steps? I'm gonna dive into them a bit more detail now. Yeah, no. Um... Beautiful, excellent. The first step is the 90%. We think that a full breath of air is, <gasps> right? And we, and we try to fully expand our lungs. Actually, did you know that if you do that, you actually put more effort and pressure on your lungs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the full breath of air in the yoga world, they say you breathe to 90%. Okay. What it does is that when you take a, this 90% breath of air into your lungs, the 10% is the release chamber for all the negative ions and impurities. And so it goes to the top of the lungs. And so when you breathe out, it gets expelled through your breathing. Nice. So try not to fill. So when you're filling, when you do this exercise later, you're going to be like, what's 90%? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll figure out the 90% as you go along. When I first, this, this, this is like, am I doing 90? I don't know. I think it's 90. <laughs> don't stress. <laughs> it will feel clunky. This is totally okay. Um, get into the habit of Reminding yourself, I, I need to release the ions. And then that helps you incorporate. In the, when you're doing this ritual, you're taking your time. You're going gentle on your body. You're not forcing it. Great. Now, are there any questions about the step? Not for no? me, no. I think you've answered. No. Yeah. Interesting stuff, hey? Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. The second is the four, six, eight. Now we tried four, eight earlier. Any guesses on what the six is for? Or what the six is about rather before I confuse anyone. Hold your breath. Yeah, that's right. Hold your breath. Now the key reason we hold our breath for six counts is one is there's actually, there's a bit of research that was done in trauma where six and seven is actually a very, healing cyclical way of releasing trauma from the body. Okay. It helps the body to desensitize from triggers. The six helps us to expel more negative ions into that top chamber I was talking about, the, the 10%. So holding the breath helps us also to calm down. And when you focus on holding the breath, it's like giving yourself a six second pause 
Good. How often do you get a pause in life? <laughs> <laughs> You're reinforcing this, this, what we started off with, that breathing is the one thing you can control. This is proof. A six second pause. You do this enough times, right? Six seconds times three, which is the cycle. We could always do three cycles of breathing. That's 18 seconds of pausing. 18 mm. seconds of pausing. You really enjoy this process of pausing. Wherever there is pain in your body, wherever there's discomfort or a bit of tightness, channel that pause into that part of your body, the awareness, your awareness. The, one of my um, favorite quotes is actually from my, um, my guru back in India. He says, we don't have, we walk around with too much consciousness. And sometimes pause helps us to stop from all of that. Mm. And it gives us that break. The more we're able to detach, the more we are able to function, to let go of something that's been, that we've been holding on to. Six seconds is a tremendous gift to hold on, to let go of something. The third step is the breathing in through the nose and breathing out to the mouth. Now, one of the reasons I like this step, especially in the morning, is, you know, I sometimes I wake up in an uncomfortable position or it's a way for me to feel like I'm exhaling. You know, overnight, your body, your different organs, they work through the times, right? Through the nights to expel or clean your system. And the lungs are like one of the first things to fire up in the morning. And that helps me to quickly expel the ions and anything else. And a bit of a funny joke, sometimes it's bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> quickly let it out. It's out of the system and off you go. <laughs> Especially if you have a partner or you had garlic the night before. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've had those. <laughs> the... the when we breathe in through our nose in the morning, we might find that there is a dominant part of the nose that's taking in more energy, more breath, more airflow. And that's actually the body's way of regulating itself. So being aware of which part of your nose is breathing more. And that's what it helps with the breathing, breathing in and breathing out through your mouth. Any questions at this point? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Would anyone like to share a, a takeaway so far from this step? Yeah, I, was, I suppose my takeaway, yeah, just the, and I think what you said before when I asked you that question about, and which makes sense, obviously, your mouth's bigger than your nose, and uh, get that breath, yeah, the different volumes you can get in. Yeah from the different things that uh, well, obviously knows the mouth, but yeah, that's been my big takeaway. Yeah. Why you would do different. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. The other. Mm. Great Scott. Thank you. In terms of calming down though, if you can do it through your nose with mm. the, the comment I put in the, the group chat about getting out of sympathetic syndrome, oh. sympathetic nervous system is when you go. <gasps> yeah. And you're yeah. breathing quickly through your mouth. Whereas if you can, as you were saying, Jenny, go for the slow in breath through the nose, you go, you sink then into, as, you're, as I'm sure you're about to say, with the, the, um, the breath holding and then the slow elongated out, you sink into parasympathetic nervous system, which gives your adrenals a break. And yeah. hey, then we feel better. <laughs> exactly. Um, it, it's... It's a channel. There is a channel. If you think about there's a channel that runs from the top of your head all to the way to your feet. Mm -hmm. And you're activating all your channels as you're breathing. Great point, Wendy. Thank you for that. The fourth step, which is one of my most favorite steps, is how do you breathe using all the pockets in your body? Now, most people think that we breathe only in our lungs. Now, because I used to be a choir girl, there's actually a chamber in your tummy that you can access and it's called your diaphragm. Now, don't ask me scientifically where your diaphragm is. <laughs> okay, thank you, Wendy. 
<laughs> well, what I do know is that when you breathe through your, I don't know if you can see this, guys. I'll try yeah. that. When can you, you breathe that? in, you can actually, because I'm talking, I'm a, it's a bit challenging for me, but when you breathe in, you can actually feel your stomach expand. So what happens is the breathing technique is actually you breathe into your stomach first and then you breathe into your lungs. Mm -hmm. And there are so many, what I like to call air pockets. And this is actually the full breath of air that's available to you. Most of us are very shallow breathing. We do, we do very shallow breathing. We do 30%. Most people use 30% of their lung capacity. Mm -hmm. This is the full 100% that's available to us. And what this does is that it gives you sus sustained energy. You're breathing deeper into your system fully. It gives you sustained energy. The benefit of this step in particular is that if you do this, your breathing ritual often enough, you find that you have stamina. Mm -hmm. You have more stamina to do your sports. You have more stamina to, to sustain your attention on a particular topic. And it's a beautiful way to go. So this particular step is you're breathing in into your stomach. All right. So the expansion, the inhalation and the, and the exhale is through the stomach first. The stomach moves first. And then the chest expands and the exhale is the chest collapses and then the stomach, sorry, the stomach collapses and then the chest. Mm. So we stomach first. This is why I love breathing because it helps me celebrate my tummy. <laughs> 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 and this, this is one of like, uh, in choir, when I was in choir, we had to learn to breathe through this technique for, to carry the sustained note. That was challenging. When I didn't know how to breathe properly, I was struggling. I was like, I was drowning. And seeing the high notes, I sounded more like chalk on a, on a blackboard. You know, some of us know what those things are. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounded like, you know, a, a cat screeching. That was because I couldn't sustain the note. But as I did more of the diaphragm breathing, I found that I, it not only did it help me with school, sorry, with singing, it helped me in sports because I could fully access all these chambers within this torso of mine. That's the fourth step. Is there any questions on this step? Who's digging the content so far? Yeah, 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 good. Good. yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The fifth is daily, 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 daily. Now, why daily? Who would like to give it a go? Why daily? Make it a habit? Yep. What else? Yeah, I'd go with that as well. I'd, I think make a habit and um, I suppose, I, I'm guessing that maybe your body learns, the muscles yeah. learn yeah. How, to, how to do it properly. Um, yeah, like yeah. That, yeah, great. Love that. When you set up this habit, and you teach your body to breathe deeply and fully. And now you know the, you know the, the real way, the true way to take a healthy breath, the 90%, the diaphragm, the techniques, the hold. This is the fully functional way to breathe. And imagine when you do that one week, when you do that for 30 days, and you develop this practice of deep breathing, and you have a ritual, and in moments where you've experienced this stress, or if you're like me and you go for a run, you're like, <gasps> this is you saying, I can do this. I can do this through my breath because my breath is the one thing I can control. This is the gift of prana, the life force that you have access to. Now, I'm going to ask you to, to stand and try this, all these steps combined, all right? We have a bit of time. Beautiful. First of all, don't worry about the counts. I'm gonna ask you to breathe fully 
into your lungs first. So fully meaning 90%. All right, 90% of your lung capacity. And we're going to do that three times. Ready? Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How did that feel? Good. Yeah? I know I pushed you at the end. You looked like you could handle it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about, did you feel like your heart was racing? Did you have any feelings in your body that came up? I probably felt yeah, my heart racing when I was breathing in and then the calmness of going out, like my body felt relaxed. Yeah. yeah. So the beauty about this is you can stretch your eight or you can do a quick eight and let it all out. That mm. eight is up to you, how you need it to, how you need it for yourself. Yeah. Great. Yeah. How did it feel doing 90%? I would have done it slower. For me, I would have done it slower, but that, that's just me. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Exactly. It's up to you how you want to do it. Mm -hmm. This is your breath. This is your life force. Personalize it. Go for it. Excellent. How did it feel doing 90% of lung? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. That was probably, a, well, it is another big takeaway for me. It's, um, yeah, that 90% makes so much sense. Rather yeah. than forcing yourself, yeah, filling it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. You guys are doing phenomenal. Go you. Woohoo. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now we're going to do the hold pattern. We're still doing only the lungs. I don't want you to worry about the diaphragm yet. We're going to try the hold pattern. All right. And 90%. I'll count you in. Breathe in. Two, three, four. And hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, I know I miscounted that totally on me. <laughs> this happens. All right, we're going to try this again. Ready? Breathe in, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How did that feel? Good. Yeah? Yeah, good. Scott, how was your heart this time? Was it racing? Um, no, it was a lot better, actually. Yeah, I found that better, yeah. And yep. the hold was good. Excellent. When, 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 I, when I was doing the hold, I actually could feel my fingers. I don't know why my fingers were, I don't know. I just was conscious of my hands for some reason. Like, Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, that, and that's the beauty about the breath. You can channel it consciously or unconsciously. Let it go to where it needs to. Mm. I, you know, the breath is a, is a blessing. The breath is a blessing. And you're sending that blessing into your fingers. Beautiful. Excellent. All right. Now we're going to do the full diaphragm breath. Okay. I'm not going to count you in. I want you to expand, like really as though you have a beer gut. <laughs> All right. And just breathe in consciously. If you want, you can turn to the side if that helps you. All right. Just breathe in. You can try it with your mouth first. Breathe in as many times as you need. Breathe in with your mouth and breathe out through your mouth. And then breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your nose. And get really comfortable 
to the point where it's automatic. So you're feeling the expansion. There are other pockets. It's not only in the front. There's also pockets of air available to you in the back, in your back. How did that feel? Yeah, yeah. Different, different for me, but yeah, Wendy. Yeah. Great. Tessa, how did it feel for you? It was good. It was a bit uh, initially confusing because <laughs> like I felt because it's um, normally just natural. Now yeah. I have to think about when I take my breath in, my stomach should actually be going out. Yeah. When I exhale, hail the breath, it has to go in. So initially I had to do that just to get it right, which is quite <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah. If you need so that a tip, was a good learning. If you need a tip, what I do is I put my fingers or one hand on my belly. Yeah. And then put a bit of pressure so I, know, I can feel it contracting and expanding. That helps as well. Or you can draw your awareness into the belly and really focus about breathing into the belly. Yeah, and you'll that see was, that the rest of it takes care of itself. Yeah, that was quite interesting for me because then I was quite conscious, like, okay, I'm getting quite a lot of breath in and my stomach is expanding outward, you know, so I'm like yeah. filling it up. Yeah. And as all that is coming back out, my stomach is going back in. So that was quite, yeah. yeah. When you first do this exercise, you may feel sometimes like, I think my lungs are going out first of air and then my belly, totally okay. This is a new way, a new conscious way of breathing. It's totally okay. Work with what your body can do. You don't have to force it. This is your control, yeah? All right, now we're gonna put it all together. How about that? So we're gonna do the 90%. We're going to do the hold and the full breathing. Okay, for the first time, first part, I'm going to count you in without, yeah, count you in and hold and breathe out for eight. Beautiful, ready? Excellent. Breathe in, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in, two, three, Four, and hold two, three, four, five, six, and out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in two, three, four, and hold two, three, four, five, six, and out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. <sighs> Go ahead and take a seat. Thank you. I love how you jumped into it. You guys are phenomenal. <laughs> how did it feel putting it all together? Good, yeah. Yeah? yeah good for me. I, I was a bit like Tessa, Tessa, that I'm a bit, yeah, it's sort of opposite. Like when you're breathing in, being aware that you're filling up. And, yeah. um, and, and when you're breathing out, because you know, I probably do the well, I, I do do the opposite um, a lot of time. I think so. To be aware of that, yeah, it was just yeah, very new and different. Yeah. Like yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. Can I just say something here, Jenny? Yeah. Remember when we were children, we were told to breathe in, and we just went <gasps> because mm -hmm. you were trying to make yourself smaller. You were told to breathe in. Yeah. Which is exactly the opposite of what yeah. we're actually doing. So this is why potentially there's that confusion in the in the head yeah. because. That's we're going back to stuff we've been taught when we were small. Exactly. No, as you breathe in, as you rightly say, you fill your lungs, your diaphragm flattens out, and obviously then your stomach has to come out because your organs are getting squashed. Yep. Yeah. Mm. What happens in the process of doing the diaphragm breathing, thank you for this, you got brought, brought, reminded me of a great point. When you do diaphragm breathing, it's like massaging your, your organs with breath. Mm. That's what it does. 
Um, and uh, when I was taught to do stomach crunches, actually our instructor told us the same thing. When you're coming up for the crunch, you because you're breathing out as you're coming up, your stomach should go in. And when you um, when you're down, I'm just trying to think now. Or when you're going back down, then you um, filling it back up. And that was actually also something where I realized like. I get confused when I when I have to do it consciously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because we think that when we exert pressure, that we need to breathe in. Mm. Mm. When actually, you know, it's all about push and pull. Mm. It's all about the push and pull. Mm. It, it will take a while. It, uh, when I when I did this in the ashram, I, I, I did this in an ashram for two months in India. I was like out of breath for ninety percent of the class. <laughs> three poses and I'm like oh stop already I can't do this what's going on <laughs> the songs by the course you know leave me breathless yeah that was me <laughs> <laughs> favorite song of the year <laughs> and, and as you get better this is a practice embrace it do what feels comfortable some days you may say you know I'm only going to do the 4A that's okay totally okay the, uh, do you have any questions about the steps? No, Pretty much got it. Well done. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. the steps were, I think, I think you covered them really well. Mm. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Mm. Uh, as a bonus, as a bonus, I'd love to share this with you. If you're doing like intensive exercise, I, I go for a run. I can't do four, six, eight or four, eight. Mm. It tires me out. I do a five, five. Okay. All right. A 5-5 five, five is a different technique. It's actually half breath of air and another half breath of air and a big breath out. So it's like so two gasps of air halfway and halfway and then a big out. Mm. And I do that with, with boxing as well. And that really helps me. Why is that called 5-5? Five, five? Because you go halfway. Instead of saying 50-50, oh, okay. I like to call it a 5-5. Five, five. And you. when you're feeling very anxious, very stressed, and you can feel like, you know, sometimes you feel like you can't get air through your throat mm -hmm. because you're trying to suppress your emotions sometimes. 5-5 five, five breathing. <sighs> Quick gasp of air into the lungs. Yeah, and you find that your stomach naturally just pops out because it goes with you. It goes with you. Mm. And for me, I love this because then I can run uphill continuously, even if I've not been running for about two weeks. <laughs> Give it a go. Um, one of my favorite things to do sometimes is at night when I need to decompress, I will play something from Spotify, like a flute music of a Japanese flute. And that's a beautiful, gentle way for me to do four, six, eight breathing and relax into sleep. And this is just some, some of the beautiful ways that you can enjoy your breath energy. I, sometimes I layer it. I have, and I, I'm gonna share this with you um, in a follow-up email. I've created a particular meditational breathing clip for my clients and I'd love to share that with you. The, I, I guide you through a four, six, eight breathing, and then we go into the deep meditation, the breath meditation, and then we come out with a four, six, eight as well. And so you can add that. It's, it's like spice. You can add it to any part of your life. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Excellent. Are there any questions at this juncture? Not for me, no. I, I think you just covered everything brilliantly like yeah i think yeah you answered everything thank you who here is going to implement the breathing technique me yeah definitely yeah, want too. to yeah. yeah what's your favorite the four eight the four six eight or the five five <laughs> i'll, I'll six, try eight, the me. yeah for me i'll try the four six eight before i go to bed tonight yeah <laughs> beautiful yeah. yeah same for you tessa yeah, with the four, six, eight, I kind of, at the six, when I get to four, I feel like I want to let go. 
<laughs> so I need to <laughs> practice holding the extra two. Yeah. I get that. Up. I get that. And that's totally okay. That's totally okay. So what it means, it, it means that you need a bit more. You need a bit more. And that's okay to give yourself that bit more, whatever that bit is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you find that you, you, want, you need to let go for longer, enjoy the letting go, enjoy the taking in. There's this reciprocity with breathing, right? You're giving to yourself and you're releasing. Giving yeah, it's a nice breathing. way of thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. One way to help you to think about how to hold your breath is to actually think about closing off your throat. Oh. That way you, you hold the breath in. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Great technique. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. The, what I love for you to do is as you get better, as this becomes your ritual, breathing healthily becomes your ritual. I'm going to ask you to invite you to teach this to five other people. Teach it to your children. See how much that has changes their lives. Because you're going to start reaping the benefits right away. 75% of my clients say, oh, I do this every day now without fail. It's a no-brainer. And they see the benefits right away. And the 5-5 five five is what some of them use at the gym even. Teach your kids. Teach your family. Teach someone. And pass on this gift of breathing. Because not many of us were taught how to breathe. Mm -hmm. this fully functional breathing and this gift this ability to control our breathing yeah do we just do three times th three cycles yes three cycles okay. only thank you great question thank you for clarifying yeah you can do more if you need to yeah i would say do three three by the time yep. you get to your third you would you have seen how remarkably calmer you might have felt at the third cycle yeah right? How much more relaxed do you feel? Yeah, yeah. One you can the, do this. Go ahead, Mindy. So one of the joys about doing it this way round, um, reflecting back on what you were saying, Jen, about the sort of chorister time when you were in the choir. When I was learning to play the flute, we the first thing I had to do was take in three deep, three long breaths, mm. and we were told no more than three because you'd get a bit lightheaded. Yeah. But then from there, it was just literally breathing in, breathing out. It wasn't that stop in the middle. Mm. And the, the, the increase of the nitrous oxide, which opens up your airways, which opens up your blood vessels, which means that you get more oxygen into it. So there, mm. there's absolutely some wonderful science behind what you're oh, saying. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, yeah. That, that, so that, that, that holding, yeah. you don't get that lightheadedness. Yeah. Great question. Great points. Thank you for sharing that. I love the science. They fascinate me. The, for me, the key thing that I took away from the ashram was that the 10%, the, 10%, the yeah. more I hold in the middle, the more ions, negative ions I release into the 10% chamber. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. That's what you want to expel. Whatever you don't need, let it go. Let it go. You guys have been absolutely phenomenal. I've had so much of fun sharing this with you, seriously. Like, yes, three more deep breathers. <laughs> Changing the world. <laughs> One breath at a time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make, as a gift, I'm going to make this recording available to you. So if you want to share this with anyone, I'm more than happy for you to leverage it. Oh, thanks, yeah. Jane. Sounds um, good. And, you know, I, I think we've covered most of this. I, I want to talk about this 30-day challenge. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm running a 30-day challenge, and I'm going to invite you to join. I know some of you are already on this. Yes, go, Wendy. <laughs> yeah. It's a 30-day ch challenge, and it's really about living daily 1% better. And, in fact, the first thing I'm going to share is this is the techniques that I showed you today, that with your breathing, this is 1% better. And imagine doing breathing like this for 30 days, what that gives you, the ability to, to breathe, to know that you, can, you have this, you can control this.
the gift, the prana. Um, and if you want to join, I'll be more than happy to invite you to this program. It's free, it's on Facebook, and it starts on Monday, the 28th of September. If you know anyone who wants to participate, I'm more than happy to have them join. These are my details. Um, oh, fabulous picture. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> rocking out in style absolutely <laughs> and visit the website jennyvars.teachable.com I'll also make the recording available there so you can access it guys honestly I want to thank you Scott, Tessa and Wendy you've been absolutely phenomenal like high five people like high five, high five. Yeah. Oh, amazing <laughs> and I'm going to check in with you in 30 days time to see how you're doing with your breathing. Cool. How much of benefit or change you've experienced. And I want, and I'm going to ask you to share this, really share this so more people are aware. And that's what I want to give you today. Yeah, I think that's such a good idea, Jenny. Thank you. I think it's um, a good share. It will really benefit a lot of people. So thanks for teaching us. Mm. Teaching me. Thank you for giving this a drive. You've been great test drivers. I love it. <laughs> Apologies for being late, Jenny. Oh, no worries at all, Wendy. You made it just in time. We were getting into the good stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th thanks a lot for that. That was, um, yeah, as I say, you, you stepped that out beautifully. Like, it was um, really had no questions because you just explained it. Everything. <laughs> it was, yeah. I learned, learned, learned a lot. Learned a lot. So I really, yeah, really appreciate your time. Oh, and thank, thank you so much, Scott. You guys have been phenomenal. Enjoy breathing from now on. Yeah. Enjoy the prana. Enjoy the gift of the life force from now on. This is the gift that you have. Beautiful. Great. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. Thank Bye, guys. Thanks, Thank all. Good night. Have a good night. night. See ya. Bye. 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 I just